This is my fourth attempt to make a little video for this thread, so due to hassles and concentration and who knows what um, I'm going for it this time. This means you're getting the uh, the, the armored fist version, right? The, the Cestus approach. So um, we'll start with, uh, you fucked it all up. Well, not really. I just wanted to say that. But it's true that there are lots of different variables that are uh, all mingled. So I've handled this topic before in terms of consulting from a design and publishing perspective, but it's cool to be looking at it from the player user perspective. And in fact, that probably should be the starting point anyway. We're talking about the difference, I think, between three really different processes. Um, process number one is encountering a text slash group slash game. So I'm either sitting, you're sitting there alone, like reading the thing, or you are coming to a table and sitting down and going, oh, what do I do? Whatever it is, is that you're learning how to play. That's a process. And we can talk about learning curves and their features, which not to draw too much on, you know, official expertise and authority here, but I am indeed super professional experience in precisely that issue. So that is its own thing. And there have to be mistakes. There have, there's no way to say, you know, we've talked about this, right? There's, there's no way to say, I know Kung Fu, right? Buck, I know Kung Fu. That's such bullshit. Nobody is ever going to give you the manual and you go, oh, and you just do it, right? You, you get it, right? Forget it. Learning is a curve. Learning is a process. Learning is a mistake-oriented and an interactive, trust-oriented and otherwise developmental process. So we can talk about really long learning curves, multi-stage learning curves. We can talk about parallel learning curves where there's different things going on. We can talk about group learning insofar as that term hasn't been, you know, disintegrated into meaninglessness as jargon, but there is such a thing as group learning. Um, we can talk about uh, all sorts of things with that. Okay, that's one. Two is the procedural manual approach. Everybody wants this to be the same as the first thing. It's the whole IT thing. It's in the manual. No, it's only in the manual if you're an IT guy. When you want to say it, meaning how to do it. And not only it, but it as I need it for an application in my way with my equipment and with my specific personality, neurology, time, and other resources details. And no, that's not in the manual. The procedures as a text, as a process, as a, as a thing to do are a different phenomenon. And they require knowing what this thing is for, not only from your own priorities, but also for, to get meta for a second, in its priorities. Um, that has to be known. Even if you don't know precisely how to do it for this one particular thing, which is what you need the manual for, or you are using the manual even more directly, not just as a reference, but literally as your do this, do that, you know, kind of guide. Either way, you have to know what it's for and you have to know how it works with your particular being, your particular use of it in this moment at this time. And so the manual, if you're going to call it that for this second purpose, simply has to be absolutely procedural. Doesn't explain a damn thing. It says this goes like that. And when you set it like that, then you count to five and, you know, put your finger on your, on your head here. And then 
do this thing. You know, it's it's the whole, you know, hold your nose and uh, close your eyes and jump up and down three times. Okay, now that you've done that, now do this. That's what procedure is like. Then there is the third thing, which is explanation, which is this is how it was made. This is why it works this way. If you really get into this, you'll see that the second order interactions are this hitting these three things. And those are contingent on how people have approached it. So you can't really predict which one it's going to be and all that stuff. Or you could take it more to a more background theoretical kind of explanation, which is, well, in the wide range of sonics and harmonics and the social history and technological history of music, this particular instrument is constructed in this way. All of those kinds of explanations, perspectives, content, awareness of what this object is relative to every other object. That's thing three. And you know what? It has no place whatsoever in learning, except insofar as you extract this or that detail, insofar as it is pedagogically powerful for somebody in a particular stage of the learning curve. Nor, and again, just like everyone wants one, number two, to actually be part of a heart one, and I say, screw you, don't. And then, just like everybody wants that, they also want this third thing, this whole explanation, understanding, awareness thing, to actually be part of the procedural manual for no reason understandable on this earth. But they do. Anyway, so from the perspective of the practitioner, the person who's being a role player, who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about? Are we talking about the person who is learning how to do this thing? Perhaps even a group who collectively, for the first time, no expert in the crowd, is learning to do this thing. Or are we talking about somebody who gets the thing and is like all about, you know, I know how to drive the freak, I know how to drive a car, but it's really nice to have this manual here in the car because I'm driving this car. Or are you in that situation regarding to this particular role-playing game where you, since They are not all cars that do the same thing, basically. You are dealing with very different purposes and procedures, and so therefore you have to know what the carness is at all in order to use the manual at all. So are you in that situation? Or are you in the situation of, I really want to understand this thing. I have experienced it. I have tasted it. I have committed intimate acts with it, with other people. And I now would like to know it better, whether that's a matter of talking to the creator, because we say the creator knows it better, even though they often don't, or it's a matter of sort of this broader historical perspective or whatever. I don't care. You know, how does it fit in with Ron Edwards' theory of blah, blah, blah? I don't care. Whatever way you want to understand it, there's some method of doing that. Some text, perhaps. Who knows? Some dialogue somewhere. So, which is it? Who are we talking about? When you raise the issue of complexity and skill in usability, I think it's fair to say that no learning curve by definition is I know Kung Fu. No, that doesn't happen. Every learning curve is by definition a a, a halting process, a process where you actually have to get through this thick-headed notion that everyone has, that if they only hear it and if it's said right, then they'll get it. Or even worse, They already knew that. They knew that. They hear a particular term, natural selection. Oh, I know that. And then the rest is just fuzz. (laughs) You know, until you get to some other thing, because you know that. Well, you don't, okay? You You just don't. I don't. When it comes to how a particular role playing game is using the word game master, I'm not gonna go in and say, 
oh, I know game mastering. Not for this game, I don't, because I don't. I have to go through a learning curve of what that is. So most people don't have that particular um, awareness that they have to say that to themselves. And so you're dealing with Dunning-Kruger big time. The learning curve in role-playing, just like in things like science and martial arts, is not how hard the thing is. It's the density of the fog that's already filling up, gumming up, sticky fog, gumming up everything that could actually help make this thing work. So that's your enemy. And so there's your thing if we're talking about learning. There's complexity of the thing itself, and better yet, the pedagogy of it. What is the pedagogy of the proper way to learn this? If we admit that it's never going to be the clarity of the manual or the completeness of the explanation. Those are all part two and part three, or thing two and thing three, not in sequence, just in separate categories. And so, too bad. Those won't help. Not when it comes to effective pedagogy. Or are we talking about this practitioner who's good with what we're doing here and how we're going to do it basically and is really learning more and more and more about what to do. And as you know, this is a tactile, a social, an experiential, largely intuitive, which is to say nonverbal, not mystical, just nonverbal, mode of picking up what to do. And one day you do it more or this way or everybody goes whoa never saw you do that before with that thing or i never heard anybody do that with that thing before or maybe not maybe you're just fucking rocking good with the way it's done and your sort of reliably goodness and the the pleasure of having you around to do that is part of what we all know as a group that you are playing with that's what it's like in thing two Are we talking about the complexities of that particular thing? Because frankly, that doesn't matter. That happens if you're using a penny whistle or if you're using a moog organ. Either one has that kind of practitioner interaction with the activity. Um, And it's not even really an active interaction with a manual. I mean, the manual could be helpful in that regard. But by the time you're really rocking and rolling this thing, you are using it in your way. And it's suitability for that. You're either breaking its suitability entirely and like, you know, playing the penny whistle from the other end because it sounds better to you that way or God knows what you're doing with the Moog organ. But the thing is that it isn't. Um something the manual can tell you. So, never mind the whole explanatory thing. I think we can easily see that if that's the mode the person is in, then we are now into the realm of discourse and the realm of debate and not in the realm of use. I'm not saying these things have nothing to do with one another. The way one has learned it will inform what kind of practitioner you are. For many people, when you really get into the explanations, you then see connections that can feed back into being the practitioner that would not otherwise have happened. And I get all that. But I think you're seeing that we need to be talking about a practitioner who has learned the game. They may not know everything about it. They may have to look stuff up. They may have to... Or or they may be blown away by some, you know, theoretical or background or contextual explanation of it that they hadn't considered or didn't know anything about. Fine. But they are not in the learning curve. And in that situation, it's right here where I say complexity in and of itself is certainly not the issue. Not even a little. Here, it's the issue of What am I getting out of this? What are we getting out of this? What is the net result, both in fictional terms and in human social creative terms, that we are achieving here? All right, so I'm finishing up. Thank God, right? Um, Finishing up my point. 
let's go back to this nonsense about, well, you should be able to pick up the manual and you should be able to just jump right into it and do it, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. Doesn't happen. When we're talking about these pick up and play role playing games, you will see that nobody is sitting there and just reading the book and then slapping it down saying, okay, I'm ready, let's go. No, they are sitting down and they're going, what do I do? Socially. And there's a curve there. And there is something that happens there. Which isn't just pick up and play. One other point, this whole issue is muddied by several, basically, you know, sprays from the can of shit mist onto the dialogue, onto the experience itself. The pedagogy gets a good squirt and clouding spray of this feculence um, for the fact that people are taught not to learn when it comes to role playing. Um, you are taught to to obey, to conform, to to do as we do, to do speak when spoken to, to what you can't do, you know, stuff like that. So there's one the, the pedagogy is often just a bad pedagogy, a broken pedagogy, identity based. You know, this is an OS. Somebody sits down. This is an OSR game. So okay, you're you're already through the dumb door. Same thing with well, this is an indie role playing game, and it goes like okay. Same dumb door. So the pedagogy is just broken from the start, culturally speaking. Two, the practitioning aspect of it all. Remember what I said, what the power of the practitioner is, where we know that we are actually practitioners. And I spoke about creative aims and I spoke about social realization of these creative aims and oh my god did i just mention gns because i did and we all know how well that goes and so then finally we get the whole explanation discussion you know debate and context and a better awareness of what this thing even is and I direct you to any what is role playing se section in any role playing text just to see how bad it is. Just how much nonsense is involved. Cops and robbers with dice. Oh my God. Not even the shred of accuracy toward anything we do. So. That's the biggest problem there too, or even a bigger problem, which is that anytime we want to talk about these three functions, let alone the necessity of separating them or maybe saying, hey, a text could focus on this one and then have the one or two of the others be kind of supportive in small ways, whatever functional version you actually would want to talk about either for a text or for what people are doing collectively when they sit down and talk, we are light years away from that. And I mean light years. It is just like I see it off way there, you know, glimmers on the horizon that maybe someday somebody could in fact talk coherently about any of this.